I need these parts for my spaceship because I'm going to outer space. And they're so cute with the outer there. But in this video, we're going to be talking about important gravitational field equations. Uh, there's going to be a number of them, so I'm just going to show you. So first of all, let's do the definition of gravitational potential energy. In other words, EP. This is what we're going to be looking at. So EP, and just so you know, it's going to be measured in joules. Okay, so this is really what we're looking at here. At least this is this is really what we're looking for. So it is defined as this. It's the work done to assemble the system from an infinite separation of the components. So what that means is you take the pieces from infinity and you bring them into where you are. So if we're looking at a graph of R, you start off at infinity and you bring them over. So we have an equation for this in your data booklet. It goes like this. EP equals minus G, and then it goes M1, M2 over R. Now the biggest mistake that a lot of people make is they forget um, that it's not r squared. Because if you're thinking about gravitational force, that's an r squared. But potential energy is just over r. This is really important to remember. All right, let's look at all the units. So gravitational potential energy is in joules. We've got a nice go to constant here. M and M2 are the masses, so that's in kilograms. And we've got the distance uh, between those two objects. That'll be in meters. So what we do then is... We look at this and say, well, what does this graph then look like if we're going to do a graph of EP versus R? Well, do you notice then that EP is proportional to, maybe I'll write it like this, I'll say EP is proportional to 1 over R. So that means then, uh, oh, by the way, it's a minus 1 over R. So what's the graph of 1 over X look like? 1 over X looks like this. So a minus that flips it. So what will this graph look like then? Well, then it'll go something like this, you know, something like that. So it doesn't cross this axis here, it doesn't cross the x, uh, the y-axis, sorry, like this. It goes something like that. And this we could actually label this EP. That's for the potential energy. Now a really important uh, point then is what happens then at r equals infinity. This thing here is asymptotic, you know, so it goes like this, it gets infinitely close to it without ever reaching it. So that means that EP equals zero, you know, at, maybe I'll just say this here at r equals infinity. That's actually an important piece that we need to know. Okay, so that means that if you're at an infinite distance away, the potential energy must be zero. All right, let's keep going. We've got something else called gravitational potential. Sounds a lot like what we've just done, and it's ever so slightly different. Because this one here is a work done per unit mass. So before we had a just work done. This time we've got a work done per unit mass. So what that really means is, if you looked at this one right here then, well, we probably just get rid of one of the masses. And this is actually what we get here. So the equation then for this, for gravitational potential, we're gonna call it V. This is actually really important. In fact, I should have written it over here, just like I did before, when I said that's equals EP in joules, we're gonna say that equals VG. And I'll show you the units in a second. So we're gonna talk about the units uh, so this is going to be the important thing. So we're going to call this V for potential and G for gravitational. And what is it? It's going to be minus G times M over R. This is the equation we have for it. Now, because gravitational potential is also about work, we actually have an equation for work done, which is great. So it goes like this. Work done equals M times delta VG. In other words, the work done... You can see it right here. Actually, the definition kind of comes from this. Look, if you get VG by itself, it's the work done per unit mass. Do you notice it's a VG, like delta VG is just going to be W over M? So I think that's why this one here makes more sense right here. Now, uh, let's look at a few things with the units here. Work done to move a mass. Well, that must be in joules because it's work. M and M, those are the masses. So those will be in kilograms. R is a distance away. So we're going to say that's in meters. We got our good old gravitational constant going on and gravitational potential. What units will it have? These look like complicated units, but these are much better. Look, take V and get it by itself. It's W over M. So it's joules per kilogram. That's what we're going to use for the unit here. So it's going to be joules per kilogram. So that's the one that's going to go up here then. It's going to be joules per kilogram. Sometimes you can use the equations to figure out the units. A uh, little point here is if we're going to try to do the graph of this right here, then uh, let me just do maybe, in, I don't know what color to use. I want to do it in yellow. Um, this one here then is going to go like this. It's also going to be minus gm over r, so it's still proportional to minus uh, 1 over r, so it'll be something like this. Oops, i got to draw it nicely. So again, what that means is if you want to go up, uh, this, by the way, is vg. 
If you want to go up in V, you have to go to the right in R. So in other words, as you go to the right, if you want to get further away from that object, you have to go up in gravitational potential. Sometimes these are actually called potential wells, and some people actually like to think about um, how to escape something as just having to climb out of that potential well. In other words, to get out of this, if you're sort of stuck in this hole, so to speak, like imagine like here is me, you know, actually standing there. In order to get out of this hole, I have in order to go up, I have to go to the right. So I have to go, you know, up in uh, gravitational potential in order to go larger radius away from the center of this thing. So that's sort of one way that some people like to think of it. Now keep in mind that if there's no change in gravitational potential, then the work done is zero. That should make sense, hopefully just from this equation. And again, just remember that as you go at r in, in equals infinity, you have zero vg because this thing is asymptotic. It goes infinitely close to zero. So that's an important piece there. Now we also have an equation for gravitational field strength. We've seen this before, it's lowercase g, except now we have an equation that relates it to the gravitational potential here. And it goes like this, it's negative uh, delta vg over delta r. This is your equation here. So what are the units? Uh, gravitational field strength, we saw this before in another video, it's newtons per kilogram. That's important. Uh, change in gravitational potential, if you don't remember it, well, get Vg by itself again. Remember, it's work over mass, so that must be joules per kilogram. So remember, that's gonna be joules per kilogram. And of course, change in distance, that's just gonna be in meters. So now if we keep going, let's talk about equipotential lines. Those are places where the gravitational potential, where Vg is the same. That's why it's equi means equal potential. So what does that mean? Well, that means that if we have the Earth here, do you remember that the we've drawn before the field lines? We've learned about gravitational field lines. I'm going to draw them like this. These are here are the gravitational field lines. Okay, so I'll draw this. I'll say this is field lines. Okay, gravitational field lines. That's in blue. Well, what happens is this. Equipotential, that's a place where, remember, it depends on a distance. Um, if we look at this one right here, where the potential, it depends on a distance outwards. So because of that, then, we can say that, hey, that means at a certain distance away from the Earth, at the same distance around, the gravitational potential will be the same. So what I can say then is it goes like this, then. It's going to be uh, a place, maybe I'll draw it like this right here. So that's going to be um, perpendicular to these lines here. So these right here are equipotential. Okay, so that's where, for example, this line right here, anything on this line, so any distance out from the center of the Earth here, anything on this line right here has the same gravitational potential. Anything on this one has the same as that one. So it's different than this one. So this one is different than that one, yes. But any point along this one line has the same potential. So that's really important. Um, so that's why I put down they are perpendicular to the field lines. Okay, so that's what I just drew here. These red ones, that's what we're looking at. And again, if you're on an equipotential line, remember, what does that mean? If you go from here to here, let's just say you're moving along the same height or same altitude above the Earth, well, have you changed in radius? No. And if you haven't changed in radius, then you haven't changed in gravitational potential. You haven't moved to the right. You haven't moved up on this curve. So because of that, because the work done is related to a change in gravitational potential, it should make sense if you're on an equipotential, if you're on a place where this is the same, then there's no change in this. So hopefully that'll make sense. That's why we say there's no work done if you're on an equipotential.